The actual term AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Let's take the various parts of that term in, in turn. Asynchronous means that you can interact with the server in an asynchronous manner, which means that you don't have to pause the browser. The browser does not have to wait for the data to have to be returned before proceeding. What happens is that the browser asks for data, that data is sent back to the browser, and when the browser is notified, it can continue in the meantime while waiting for the data, continue processing and performing actions for the, for the user, but when the data is downloaded, it is notified, the browser is notified, and the data is then used by the JavaScript inside the browser. That's the J part of AJAX, is JavaScript that makes, makes everything work in the browser. That's what allows you to connect to the server, so asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Now, there's actually two ways of working with data from the browser as either plain text or as XML. We were going to be working with plain text originally because it's a lot easier to work with in JavaScript than XML, but you can also work with, of course, with XML, and XML is the lingua franca of the web for data handling. It is the preferred technique for passing data back and forth on the internet because XML data is in text form, pure text, and the internet, the web, World Wide Web is set up to handle text sent back and forth in HTML format, but also that means that you can send text back back and forth in XML format. So data being sent is sent around on the internet using XML, and we're going to work with XML in a little in a little bit. However, we'll start off with with text data being downloaded from the internet, and as in this example, this is index.html. This is our first example uh, that will show us how to work with AJAX. It's index.html in the downloadable code for the course. The idea here is that you see this one before. You click the display message button and using AJAX techniques, this web application will fetch data and from the server and replace this text. The fetch data will go here with the data it's fetched from the server. As you see here, when you click the display message button, there you are, this, this text was fetched using AJAX. This is our first AJAX example, index.html, and let's start taking a look at how this works in JavaScript. This is the important part is for this particular example is the JavaScript. What happens is here is the, the script element, and the first thing that this example does, and what this movie is all about, is creating an X HTTP request object. XML HTTP request objects are what make AJAX possible. They are special objects built into all modern browsers that allow you to connect to a web server behind the scenes without causing a page refresh. This is a crucial point in AJAX. H XML HTTP request objects are what makes AJAX possible because using those objects you're allowed to connect to the server behind the scenes and download data. So our first order of business in any AJAX application is to create an XML HTTP request object with which to connect to the server. So this script, this JavaScript in this application starts by executing this code which creates a JavaScript variable called XML HTTP request object, setting it to false so there's nothing in that variable at first. The idea now is we have to create an XML HTTP request object in order before proceeding with the rest of the AJAX application. So the way you create an XML HTTP request object varies by browser. So let's first work with non-Microsoft browsers. You say if window.xml HTTP request. This is the way of checking if you're working with a non Microsoft browser and if it supports if the window object supports XML HTTP request object creation. If so, then this expression that you see highlighted on the screen, this expression will return true and you can create your XML HTTP request object like this. You set the variable XML HTTP request object to new 
XML HTTP request and then the parentheses as well that creates a new XML HTTP request object for you for ready for use with Ajax in non Microsoft browsers what if you have a Microsoft browser in that case you check for the presence of the window.activex object object so if this expression returns true then you have you're working in a Microsoft browser and you're allowed to create an XML HTTP request object and this is the way you do it you set the XML HTTP request object variable which we've originally set to false to new activex object Microsoft and then in quotes Microsoft XML HTTP that is the way that's the statement you need JavaScript statement you need in Microsoft browsers in order to create a new XML HTTP request object which you need for Ajax so just to recap when this page first loads the script the JavaScript is executed you see here you create a variable XML HTTP request object set it to false if you're not working with a Microsoft browser you then this expression will return true if you can create XML HTTP request objects you create one this way otherwise if you're working in a Microsoft browser that supports the creation of XML HTTP request objects and all modern ones do then you create a new one a new XML HTTP request object this way so after this data is executed after these statements are executed you have your XML HTTP request object which is the focus of all Ajax operations you're going to need that object in order to work with Ajax and this is the usual way to create that that object in modern browsers note that this JavaScript is outside any function that's because you want to execute this JavaScript before any function is ex before any other function is executed this JavaScript that you see highlighted on the screen is automatically executed when the page first loads so the result of this is if you're able to create an XML HTTP request object then it will be loaded at the end of the execution of this code otherwise that variable will contain a value of false and you can check whether or not it contains false or an object in the rest of your code but this is the first step of working with an Ajax application is to create an XML HTTP request object and the code you see right there highlighted on the screen allows you to do that